What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and I don't really know what I'm doing here. Um, I, I thought there was going to be an Atlanta United game today, but I tuned in to watch, and I don't know who was playing today, but it wasn't us. You know, some other team showed up to play Vancouver today, so I don't know if you want to go to somebody else's channel and watch their review of whoever played today. I don't know who it was. I don't really know how to end this joke, so segue, and yeah, today sucked. I mean, honestly, complete shadow of the team we have been for the past two weeks. And I, I get it's hard to play on the road. I get it's a different atmosphere, it's a different field, this is turf, not grass. I get that. But it doesn't excuse how poor we played today. You know, and not even just the, the quality dropped, it was like the effort dropped today for quite a few players out there. And I just, I'm really disappointed by that. You know, I don't necessarily expect to win every single game, but don't go go get blown out by Vancouver, and especially when we had the lead. That's the most embarrassing part about all this. It's not just the blowout. It's not just the fact that you know they kind of ran over us today. It's the fact that we had the lead, and then gave it up and lost three one again. I mean, how many times have we done that this season where we had the lead and then we gave it up later on because we were just lazy and sloppy and just gave it away. So, yeah, let's, first of all, let's, because something has to be done about it and nothing seems to be getting done, the rest were terrible today. And this, this has probably been one of the worst. I mean, just to kick things off, about five minutes in, Carmona and one guy go sliding in for a challenge. They both get there about the same time. Carmona wins the ball. And it goes off of him, and I think he gets the guy afterwards. And so the guy starts clutching his shin where he probably got kicked. Asad gets the ball, and they kind of stop to let that guy be checked out. Well, the ref blows his whistle to stop the play to have that guy checked out. And the guy's rolling around, rolling around. And then the ref goes and gives them the foul. And all of a sudden, the guy's up, and he's fine. And he's just hunky-dory, like nothing just happened to him. I'm just like, seriously? Like, you, you stop the play... To let the guy be checked on, and then all of a sudden, oh, you know what, now that I think about it, it's a foul. Seriously? Later on, same half. Collision comes in, I can't remember exactly what happened, but one of their defenders goes down like he just got shot. And so he's he's holding something, he's in anguish, in anguish, rolling around, ball goes out for our throw-in, play gets stopped so the guy can get checked on. As they're checking on the guy, ref goes, tweet! Seriously? And then the guy gets up and jogs off the field like nothing's wrong with him. It's embarrassing. The ball goes out for a throw-in. You wait a good 15 seconds, probably 30 seconds, while the guy's getting checked on, and then decide, oh, you know what? In hindsight, that was probably a foul. Tweet, foul, go, 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 Vancouver. That's ridiculous. On top of that, I, there's, there's a moment where <laughs> Cross comes in off a corner, Ball's bouncing around, you know, Amron has a shot deflected off the line, off the post. Gressel's there with the header, headed off the line. And then one of their players heads it out. Carmona is about to stick out his leg to get it out of the air, but sees the guy, pulls it back, and the guy falls over. And then the ref points for a penalty. Everybody's like, wait, what? Like, how is that a penalty? There's no foul, you know, definitely not a foul on them, but there's nothing there. And then talks to his AR, goes, oh, my bad, my bad. It's a foul here for that non-contact. Go Vancouver again. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And the amount of times that Vancouver gets a foul called for them because a player flops over, and then they're allowed to just pull and tug and knock our players side to side, no call. I mean, it, it was really, it was almost kind of funny. Ball comes up, Valalba's battling with the defender, Defender all the just grabbing onto him, pulling, 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 and then ball, go ball goes the other way because the defender won the battle because he pulled Valalbo aside, and then I think it was Carmona kind of gets a hold of a guy, you know, not really bad, just a little bit of a tussle. Guy fa falls over, just flops, and the ref goes, oh yeah, that's a foul. The one over there that just happened two seconds ago, no, 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 but that's a foul. <sighs> I don't understand. And the thing is, I'm not one of those conspiracy theorists. I like to make jokes like, oh, Vancouver obviously paid off the rest today. I like to make jokes like that because sometimes it can be funny if the timing's right. But I'm not a conspiracy theorist. 
but there seems to be a lot of calls going against us. You know, it's not just these refs are terrible both ways. A lot of the times, it feels like the refs are very one-sided against us. Today, especially, there was never a time where the ref had to think about it for 15 seconds and then said, oh, you know what, in hindsight, that's actually Atlanta's ball. That only ever happened for Vancouver today. Quite a few times. There's their second goal. At first, the ref said it was a throw-in, but then all of a sudden he's like, oh, you know what, in hindsight, corner. And then it leads to their second goal. It's just it's ridiculous how many times that the ref just made horrible, horrible mistakes today against us. You know, mistakes that hurt us. I know I talk about the rest of a lot, but it's getting really ridiculous, and nothing is changing. You know, refs aren't being punished, and nothing's changing. They're not getting better, they're just getting worse. So that's really frustrating. Individual performances today, you know, the lineup, I don't mind seeing this lineup because it's the same one that won us the past two games. You know, very good, strong lineup. Um, individual performances can show it again today why we need Guzan, because I just... The first goal, not much you can do about. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, you need to stop that one-on-one challenge. I mean, it's just defense needs to cover that. Second one, though, header to the far post to kind of bounce, bounce, and he just kind of plants and dives to the far post instead of actually moving his feet to get over there. you got to do better there. I, you have to move your feet. You have to move your feet. I don't know how many times I've said that this season for him, but he has to move his feet. I'm tired of seeing him having to make these acrobatic saves where he has to jump to get over there because he's not moving his feet to get over there. It's really, really frustrating. Um, and I can't remember how the third goal happened now because at that point I was almost done watching because I was so frustrated. Um, oh, right, yeah. Uh, he made a pretty good save. Uh, it was a corner. Header wide open. Nobody's marking. He makes a good save off the line. Nobody's moving. So I'm not going to blame him for the third goal because that's everybody else on the field not moving at all, just watching as they have two free shots on our goalkeeper. But, I mean, the second goal, I, I do blame on him. And I think just watching him today, he doesn't look comfortable. I mean, I honestly get scared whenever we pass the ball back to him because I don't know what's going to happen. Is he going to kick it out of bounds? Is he going to kick it to them? Is he going to slip and fall? I mean, what's going to happen? I never know. So I'm really concerned about him. And I... Can't wait for Guzan to get in because we really need a keeper who's confident in what he does and can lead the line back there. He's not one of those keepers, and it's being proven again today. Uh, Mears, kind of a non-factor, probably one of the... I would say there was two players, in my opinion, that had good games today. There were two players, two or three players that had average games today, and then everybody else had bad games. Mears is one of the average. Uh, I think just not really much of a factor going either way you know defensively he didn't have a whole lot to do because they were attacking mainly through the middle because we were so exposed there um, <clears throat> and then going forward you know he sometimes provided a couple good runs but for the most part he didn't really do much on the ball you know he didn't do anything that effective you know, compared to what he normally does so I'd just say yeah, average not not good but not necessarily bad either uh, Parkhurst today though had a bad game and honestly Perez did too I mean those two have been very solid in the back for us. They've been doing a very good job in the past few games of just really holding it down back there. Today, it looked like DC United and New York City games all over again. I mean, just that, that lack of communication, the lack of organization, it was embarrassing to watch. As they, they're, they're doing like these fancy flicks, but in truth, all they're doing is just doing little back heels to nowhere. But our team is so like out of sorts that they're just running everywhere. And so that little back heel... Our defender should just step in and win it, but he's so lost that he runs past it, and then another player who wasn't there now can run in and get it. And all of a sudden it looks like, oh, they're just moving the ball around so fancy. Not really. You know, our defense should have been there, but they're just so lost that they make it look good. And so Parkhurst, I would say his problem today was just, once again, he's supposed to be our leader that back there, being that captain, being the leader from the back. And once again today, he wasn't. Too many times, players out of position, he's not organizing, he's not being the leader back there, organizing everybody else in the defense. He just looks lost at times. And when he, you're supposed to be the leader in the back, that's not good when you're looking lost. Perez was very adventurous today, I guess. Way too many times dribbling and getting pulled out of position, making challenges high up the field, not tracking players. 
he just he looked a shell of the defender that he has been in the past few games. I don't know what happened to him, but today he looked like he had no clue what he was doing. And Parker's didn't help him either. It didn't look like there was any communication going on between the two of them. Garza is one of the two that had a good game today. You know, he made some mistakes, yes, but just his effort to get back, his effort to get up the field and try to influence the game, I think he had a good game. You know, he still needs to make sure he's not getting pulled too far out of position because I do think the first goal was a bit on him because he's stepped out of the box looking to try to counterattack while the back post is wide open where he should probably be probably be. But I think that also comes back to Parker should make sure that somebody's back there. You know, he should make sure that Garza is stepping back and not everybody let's go, go, go. So um but as far as I mean, you see what he's trying to do on the ball, you see what he's trying to do off the ball. All around the field, he's just trying to make something happen. He's trying that's that's the biggest thing for me. And that's the two players that had good games, in my opinion. It was the effort that I saw. It wasn't necessarily the quality of it. It was just the effort that I saw really made me think you had a good game today because you at least tried. Even if it wasn't coming off, even if sometimes it looked not great, that that effort is there. And I see that, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, Carmona and Laurentowitz in the midfield, again, Carmona just still kind of lost at times. You know, that... Going back to uh, a few games ago, you know, back when I was saying, you know, he's constantly on the ground, he's constantly sliding in. There are times when it just seems like he's either sliding in and missing it, or he's not tracking the right man, or he's not really involved. Today, it's almost like the past two games that what he's really been doing well is moving the ball. You know, the distribution, the possession in the midfield, he's been doing that pretty well. Today, it was like he wasn't really getting the ball. It was like he wasn't really moving to receive it that much, and so. When we don't, when he doesn't get possession, when he's not the one moving the ball around, he's not really involved that much. And defensively, he definitely doesn't really get involved. You know, he slides in, and that's pretty much it. He's done if he misses. So, yeah, I don't know. He just didn't seem very effective today. He seemed like he's kind of a bystander for most of the game. Uh, Laurentowitz was the other one I think had a good game today. You know, just that once again that effort to get back, that effort to start something, and just really worked hard today and that's something that I not, did not expect to say about Laurentowitz at the beginning of the season. When I first saw him I'm like god this guy he's not going to work hard he doesn't track players. Today he did. Um, the second goal he might have been able to step in front of. Uh, I couldn't tell if maybe Can had called everybody off of it or something because even Assad kind of stepped out of the way. So I don't know if that was Can's doing or if maybe he just thought if I stick a leg in maybe I'll kick the defender or something but he was he was there for the second goal and didn't really get in the way. So kind of disappointed there, but when the ball was in the middle of the field, Laurentowitz was most of the time there stepping in to win it, putting a body in, putting pressure on somebody. And whenever he came off the field, it just became so much easier for them to pass around us. And I was really disappointed when he came off. I think that was a huge mistake on Tata's part. You took off the better of the two defensive mids today, and while I see what you're trying to do, bringing in a forward, he's not the one to take off. You know, he's the one that's kind of holding down the midfield. Carmona is not that. He's not, first of all, he's not as big as Lorenzo. Second of all, he doesn't work as hard. And I hate to say it because, you know, I don't want to call out Carmona, but there are times when he's kind of lazy, and you don't want that from your defensive mid. Lorenzo today was not lazy, constantly moving, constantly doing anything he could, so... I'd say he had a good game, and I'm disappointed that he's one of the ones to come off early. Assad had the worst game today. I, I have not seen him play so poorly at all. You know, this had to be one of the worst games he's ever played. Unless, you know, I don't know, maybe if he's had worse earlier in his career or something, but God, he was terrible. I mean, every single pass, almost every pass just didn't come off. Every single time he makes a run, it's not the right run. He's not. He's getting beat off the ball time and time again. He's not really. He wasn't strong enough to hold up the challenge today. He just. He looked like he was, not even a player today. Like he just so, so bad. And I I hope that maybe today he'll look at he'll watch the tapes he'll look at it and be like okay, that game's over. I need to move on. I can't have that type of game again because, wow, it was bad. It was terrible, and it, that really affected us. Because you know, one of our most effective movements has have been going down the left side. You know, Almiron, Assad, and Garza all moving the ball. You know, that little triangle there. 
But aside today, his passes weren't connecting. It felt like every single time he touched the ball, it goes to the other team. So, yeah, I was really disappointed with him today. And hopefully he can go from here and be like, I'm going to get better. I'm going to improve from that because I don't think he can get much worse than that. Uh, Almiron in the middle, one of the average games. Uh, he He's not one of the ones that got lazy by the end of the game, but he started to get into this rhythm of if things are working, he looks great. But if things aren't working, it's almost like he tries to do too much on his own. And you can see that. You know, they're just... I understand there are not a whole there's not a whole lot of movement for him, so whenever he's on the ball you can tell he's looking for somebody and he doesn't have it, so he tries to do it by himself. But I do feel like earlier on in the game I think he really could have affected a lot by just moving the ball around a bit quicker, you know, making sure move, pass, pass, pass. It felt like there were too many times earlier in the game where he's just holding on to it a bit long. He's not really getting it going. Um this was probably his worst game of the season. Uh, I don't think I've seen him really play so poorly. So, it, the fact that this was... His <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what that was. <clears throat> the fact that this was his worst game of the season and he wasn't the worst player on the field kind of tells you just how good a player he is. You know, that this this was an average game for him and he still looks like one of the better players on the pitch. So, I really hate it for him because I know it can get really frustrating to try to do all this on your own and then you're not able to do it. So I hope he, he can get kind of kind of be an influence on the rest of the team and be like, look, guys, we have to improve. Because I really do think he can be the talisman of the team and just drive everybody forward despite the fact that we're not getting great results, um, at least away from home. So Gressel was the other one that I thought had an average game today. You know, Obviously got himself the assist. Uh, I forgot to talk about Garza for the goal. Great run from him to to get the goal. Good assist from Gressel to get there. Uh, but Gressel has really improved, I think, on the right wing. I, I just I think he finds himself in a good bit of space over there. And so he has time to sort of set himself up, and he doesn't have to play under a lot of pressure over there. So I think that helps him. However, I think later on in the game, Vancouver started figuring out that's kind of what we're doing. You know, we go out wide and we try to find a space. And so they pushed a lot of people out wide and cut off the space for Assad and for Gressel. And so after they did that, Gressel kind of faded out of the game. So I do think, until they figure that out, until they move players out there, I do think he had a good game. But then after that, he was ineffective. And I, that's that's still frustrating for me, that he can't really play under a lot of pressure. You know, there's, there's those moments where he dribbles through a couple players. The problem with that is, though, he dribbles past them, but you can see the way he's dribbling is like desperation. You know, like he's barely flicking it past their foots, barely getting it away from them, but he's not going anywhere. He has no idea what he wants to do on the ball. He's just barely getting it away from the defenders until eventually one steps in and gets it out. So, yeah, I just, he still needs to improve, but I do think he's doing a lot better if he has time and space out wide. So keep playing him there. Hopefully he can get better. Hopefully he can improve more. Uh, but today was just average for him. And then Villalba up top had a bad game, uh, especially considering what he's been doing, you know, the runs he's been making, the constant pressure he's been putting the defense under. Today, it just didn't feel like he was making the right runs. It didn't feel like he was really putting as much pressure as he could on the defense. Um, just really another player, just like Assad, who seemed kind of like a shell of his former self today. So, yeah, th that's pretty much it for the first team. Uh, the subs that came on, I already talked about the first one, completely disagree with bringing Laurentowitz off. Uh, Jones, I don't mind getting him on for height, for um, just kind of having that big body in the box to win headers. The problem with that, though, is the first corner that comes in after he comes on, you expect him to be winning the header. You expect him to be getting it out. Instead, what happens is he stands right on the PK spot as the ball goes over him, heads back across to a guy he's supposed to be marking who then gets a free header as he stands there and goes... After Cam makes a save as some guy runs next to him and then puts it away. So, why don't we bring you on the field again? You know, it just, it really makes me, I guess it makes me realize why I think Tata hasn't been playing him. Because that. You know, you should be moving. You should be constantly in motion. Ball comes across, okay, they're going up for header. There's five guys there. Okay, well, I'm going to be ready in case he nods it down. But you're not. You're just standing and watching as... The guy right next to you has a free header. 
So really disappointed with that. And after that, he didn't do pretty much anything else. Next up to come on, uh, Walks came on for Parkhurst. I don't really know what the idea was. I don't know. Maybe Parkhurst had some sort of injury. Maybe he just thought, let's get Walks on to give him some time. I don't know what was going on. But, yeah, that that was the next sub, and then I don't think we made another sub after that. So, just all in all, like I said, not the Atlanta United that I've been watching. You know, it's just not nearly the team that we've been seeing. You know, the last two games against Houston and against New York City, great games, great performances, great wins. Today was just like, it's like they didn't even show up. It's like, I don't know if jet lag got to them. I don't know if men mentally they weren't ready. I don't know if maybe being away, if they just let that get to them because they've had the backing of us, the fans at home for the past couple games. But you could just tell today they were not ready. They were not there. They were not mentally prepared. And it really cost them. You know, that, the problem is, I think, we need to come up with some sort of answer for all right, we got that goal early. We put a lot of pressure. We got an early goal. Now let's find some sort of answer to say, all right, they're not getting into our box. You know, we need to make sure that we're staying focused to be very solid defensively because it doesn't seem that way most of the time. You know, we get that early goal, but then all of a sudden the other team starts getting momentum and we start playing around it in the back and we start giving it away. So it's just constantly down our throats, down our throats, down our throats, and we're not, there's no answer. The other team just keeps getting momentum, keeps getting momentum. They get a goal, and then all of a sudden, now we're on the back foot. Now they've got even more momentum, and then they get another goal, and then they get another goal. So I just feel like we need to have some sort of answer, whether it's stop playing around with it in the back and just get it upfield. You know, every single time ball comes to you, just clear it out. Don't look to pass whenever we're a goal up. Or if it just needs to be, we need to drop a third, you know, learn to it, stay back. You know, don't try to get up the field. Just stay back as a third defender. That way we don't have to worry about them getting through the middle. You know, we always have somebody in there. Um, and on top of that, you know, is Guzan coming in going to help us out? Hopefully. I guess we'll see whenever he gets here. But we we need some sort of answer because performances like that, they're going to cost us a chance at the league. You know, like we have a really, really good chance to go on and try to push and make it into the top three, I believe. I mean, just looking at it right now, if we'd won today, I think we would have gone third above everybody else with 20, we would have had 21. And so the fact that we drop all three points today is really disappointing, and it hurts our chances of going forward. So, yeah, that's about it for me today, though. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Who was your worst man of the match? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Atlanta and I reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.